Nvidia now have a super version of the GTX 1660, but how does it compare to the 1660 Ti, and which should you get? I've compared 15 games at 1080p and 1440p to show you the differences and help you decide. Let's take a look at how the 1660 Super and 1660 Ti differ in terms of specs. Note that things like clock speed will vary between specific cards. These are just the reference specs for each. The older 1660 Ti has 9% more CUDA cores, however the Super has slightly higher base and boost clocks. The Ti has more texture units, and although both have 6GB of GDDR6 memory, the new Super versions is faster. For the testing, I'm using the MSI Gaming X version of both the GTX 1660 Super and GTX 1660 Ti, so results should be fairly comparable. Both of these do have a small out of the box overclock, expect slightly different results with different models. The system that I'm testing with has an Intel i7-8700K CPU overclocked to 5GHz on all cores and an MSI Z390 Ace motherboard, along with 16GB of DDR4-3200 CL14 memory running in dual channel. You can check links in the description for details on all of the components as well as for up to date pricing. The same drivers and Windows updates were used for all testing, so let's get into the results. Control was tested running through the start of the game with the same test pass completed each time. Although the 1660 cards are aimed at 1080p gaming, I've also thrown in 1440p results too, as some games are definitely capable. With the high preset, at 1080p, the 1660 Ti was just 2.7% faster than the 1660 Super, and 4.5% ahead at 1440p. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's built-in benchmark. At 1080p, the Ti was 3.6% ahead of the Super, increasing to a 5.5% lead at 1440p. Apex Legends was tested with all graphical settings at maximum, and at 1080p there was basically no difference between the two, but then with the higher 1440p resolution there was a larger 7% improvement to average frame rate with the 1660 Ti. Borderlands 3 was tested with the game's benchmark tool, and this title was seeing an above average increase to performance with the Ti, granted it's still a somewhat small difference, with the 1660 Ti just 5% ahead at both resolutions in average FPS. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode with the highest ultra preset. There wasn't much difference between the two with this game. Just a 2.6% boost at 1080p with the TI, and 2.8% at 1440p. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and I typically find this test to be more CPU dependent, which probably explains why there's basically no difference between the Super and TI here. I've tested Fortnite with the new Chapter 2 map, and the replay feature was temporarily removed when I did this testing, so I played through the same part of the game in each way for each test. At 1080p, the 1660 Super saw the biggest improvement out of all games tested, with a 7.8% improvement to average FPS, though the 1440p difference was lower, putting the TI just 3% ahead. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was tested using the built-in benchmark at very high settings and was another with minimal differences between the two. The TI was just 1.2% faster at 1080p in average FPS, doubling to a 2.4% improvement at 1440p. Granted, this is only a 1FPS change. Overwatch was tested playing in the practice range, and this game saw the second largest improvement with the TI out of all games tested, though it was only about 6% ahead of the Super. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, with the exact same replay file used for each test. No noticeable differences here. At 1080p, the results are basically within margin of error. And then at 1440p, the difference is still small with the 2.6% advantage to the TI in average FPS. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark. Just looking at the results, I want to say there's basically no major differences. Because as we've seen, there's hardly any difference between the TI and Super. Despite this, the game was above average out of the titles tested, with the TI coming out 3% ahead at 1080p and 5% ahead at 1440p. The Witcher 3 was tested with ultra settings, and like most other games, hardly any real difference between the Super and TI. At 1080p, the TI was just 2.5% ahead of the Super, rising ever so slightly to 2.6% higher at 1440p. Strange Brigade was tested as a Vulcan title using the built-in benchmark. The differences in this game were below average, with just a 2% improvement on the TI at both 1080p and 1440p resolutions. I've tested CSGO with the Uletical FPS benchmark, as I wanted to see how a game that typically favours CPU power would behave. At 1080p, there was a small 1.1% improvement to average FPS with the TI, 
However, a larger 8% rise to the 1% low was noted. At 1440p, the change to average FPS rose a little, with the TI now 4% ahead of the Super. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with the game's benchmark tool. At 1080p, there was just a 3.3% improvement with the TI, lowering to a 2.4% higher average frame rate at 1440p. In terms of overall improvement, over all 15 games, on average, the GTX 1660 Ti was performing about 3% better when compared against the GTX 1660 Super in terms of average FPS. As you can see, the results can vary quite a bit between specific game. However, realistically, there wasn't much practical difference between them. When we step the resolution up to 1440p, the difference only changes slightly. On average, the GTX 1660 Ti is now 3.7% ahead of the GTX 1660 Super on average. So not too much of a change there with the higher resolution. I don't think either of these are a great choice for 1440p gaming, though some games do run fine. It'll come down to settings and what frame rate you want to target. As for the differences in total system power draw, the system with the 1660 Super was actually using 6% more power from the wall when under the same test. I thought these were odd results, so checked with Steve at Hardware Unboxed, and he had the Super as using 5% more power in a different game. I suggest checking out his video if you want to see more 1660 Super results. Temperatures were quite close, with the TI just 1 degree higher, again in the same F1 2019 test. The results should be quite comparable, as I used MSI's Gaming X version of each with the same cooling design. Now for the final difference, the price. I suggest checking updated prices using the links in the description, as prices will change over time. The MSRP is meant to be $230 US for the Super and $280 for the TI, so $50 or 21% more money for the TI. The MSI Gaming X Super I'm using is meant to be $249 US, while the 1660 Ti Gaming X currently goes for $308, so 23% more money for the Ti in that case. Here in Australia, MSI's 1660 Super Gaming X that I've tested is going for $439 Australian dollars, while the same version but 1660 Ti is $499 Australian dollars, or 13.6% more money. In my opinion, the new GTX 1660 Super is better value. In my country, you need to pay around 13% more money to go for the Ti, or apparently 20% more in the US. And on average, it's only offering 3% better performance at 1080p. As we just saw in most games, the results were very close, which makes the 1660 Super seem like a strange release. Why not just drop the price of the TI instead or something? In the end, the 1660 Super is giving almost the same levels of performance. You're just not going to practically notice a 3% or so performance difference. So due to the cheaper price of the newest 1660 Super, it would be my pick between the two if I was buying today. With that said though, if you can find a 1660 Ti on a good sale, it could be worthwhile for the lower power draw. Let me know which you'd pick and why down in the comments, GTX 1660 Super or 1660 Ti. This specific comparison is of course only relative between these two cards. I'll be doing more comparisons in the future once the 1650 Super and AMD's new options come out. So if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future tech videos like those.